Sombra is arguably the most hated Overwatch hero of all time, and still haunts players to this day. Blizzard have attempted to fix this several times, but despite giving Sombra a whopping 4 reworks, she has remained unhealthy for the game across all of her iterations, and that's likely to remain true in the future. So that begs the question, why is Sombra so impossible to balance? In this video, I'll be covering the entire history of this troubled hero, from her underwhelming launch to her absolute dominance, and of course her constant annoyance, in order to evaluate why the devs have never been able to make her work. Sombra was the second hero added to Overwatch after the game's initial launch, but that's not where our story begins. Ever since the game's open beta, Sombra was already being teased in Overwatch's first and only alternate reality game, ARG for short. This involved a long drawn out sequence of clues being left for players to find, such as this cipher in the Summer Games trailer, or this data moshed image of Dorado, all hinting at the game's future hero. To begin with, players expected Sombra to be Overwatch's first new hero, but after Anna took that place, the excitement for Sombra simply continued to build up even more. Many ciphers, obscure clues, and strange images later, Sombra was finally revealed in the Infiltration animated short at BlizzCon 2016. As you can understand, players were very excited, with Sombra being one of the most highly anticipated new Overwatch heroes of all time. Despite that, Blizzard have never done anything similar for future hero releases, instead opting for a simpler approach. Even though the Sombra ARG was a success by several metrics, it actually largely failed at the end of the day. It was a huge series of well thought out puzzles, but solving the puzzles didn't really Bruh. lead anywhere. It built hype, but eventually many players became tired of following breadcrumbs for no reason, with countdowns which led nowhere, and so it kind of ruined Sombra's release for a lot of people. And this was just the start of her troubled history. Although the ARG wasn't perfect, many were still excited for the release of Overwatch's second new hero. However, Sombra actually wasn't received particularly well upon release due to a very unique and difficult to use kit. Her role in her team felt unclear, how are you supposed to be a stealthy assassin and a supportive team hero at the same time? To many, she felt underpowered due to the immense complexity in effectively utilising her abilities, as well as her lack of damage output, meaning that you simply weren't rewarded enough for playing her without knowing exactly what to do. As a result, she never became particularly popular in her initial state. Now, at this time, her kit was actually very different from what it is today. If you look at her current abilities, not a single one works in the same way that they did when she was first playable. Of course, Virus did not exist, and her hack lock plays out of her abilities for a full 6 seconds. EMP was similar in that it also blocked abilities for an extended period, yet did no damage. The biggest differences, however, lay in her other two abilities. In the past, stealth didn't last indefinitely, and was instead on a cooldown, but you could actually contest objectives whilst invisible. Her translocator also didn't last forever, like it used to before her most recent rework, instead being an indestructible beacon which only lasted for 15 seconds. This meant you had to be a lot more careful in when and how you flanked, with planning ahead being crucial to success. Even though her kit did have potential, at the time people were unsure how to use it effectively, and this was true even among the best of the best. The first player to use Sombra in a competitive setting was Esker playing for Lunatic High in Season 1 of Apex, which was one of the first forms of competitive Overwatch. Despite being a great player however, even Esker struggled to accomplish much as the stealthy hacker. Clearly, she would take some getting used to. For a while, that continued to be the case with Sombra. Despite still being somewhat annoying, regular players seemed to be more frustrated about having a Sombra on their team than playing against one. Meanwhile, most top players ignored her entirely. But there were a few who began to investigate the true value of her kit, and soon enough, they found it. There is still one part of her kit which I previously left out, which would go on to become key in how Sombra was utilized at the highest level. Just like she can now, Sombra could hack health packs for her team to use. The difference back then was that she actually gained ult charge from the healing leads provided. As a result, it was possible to farm up EMP at absurd speeds, and considering just how powerful blocking of all abilities was in coordinated play, this became a great strategy. Combine that with the buff to hack in early 2017, and Sombra finally began to see some serious play. At this time, Sombra was mostly used for her supportive capabilities, rather than her damage, despite being a DPS. She could hack a health pack when defending a point, so that her entire team could use it to heal, resulting in EMP being available again and again. 
This was particularly effective on assault, also known as 2CP, as there was often a hackable mega near the objective. Eventually, her role began to expand, with some niche used for shutting down tanks on attack, but overall she remained more of a support for the rest of 2017. That was the case for competitive play, but in regular games she remained seemingly obsolete. This doesn't mean that Sombra had no impact, but many felt that she was simply a hindrance to a team due to the lack of coordination in those lobbies. Surprisingly, from what I can tell, a lot fewer people found her overly irritating than I originally expected. Not that she wasn't annoying at all, but I suspect that the combination of lacking lethality, as well as the limitations surrounding stealth and translocator, resulted in Sombra being significantly less of a problem. On the whole, she was still quite underpowered for 99% of the player base, despite finding her place in top play, and so Blizzard decided to make some changes in February of 2018. As you may have expected, her ult charge generation from health packs was removed, and instead this power was redistributed into the other parts of the kit. Faster hack, reduced weapon spread, improved passive, and longer translocated duration were all among these adjustments. Thankfully, this gave her a much needed damage buff, and her purpose finally began to shift towards that of an actual DPS rather than a support. Unfortunately for her, this only helped so much, especially since the new dominant composition across most levels of play, known as GOATS, required 3 tanks and 3 supports, leaving no room for Sombra as a DPS. The GOATS meta is infamous in Overwatch history for lasting way too long and affecting almost all tiers of play, so our stealthy hacker was forced out of favour for quite some time. But not forever. The turning point, July 24th, 2018. After seeing that their changes to Sombra didn't have a desired effect, Blizzard decided to once again make major adjustments to her kit, and this time it would change her identity forever. That's because both stealth and translocator finally lasted indefinitely. This gave Sombra all the freedom in the world to flank as she pleased, and caused chaos around the map, as she no longer had to worry about timing when to go in this, and always had a free escape. At the time, players were split on how this would impact Sombra, with some feeling that the changes were an overall nerf with the speed decrease and destructible translocator, whereas others thought that she would become incredibly powerful. Of course, looking back, we know that the latter was true. Sombra was now capable of sitting in the enemy backline and waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike, and as long as placed correctly, Translocator provided a get out of jail free card. Of course, considering the team and communication oriented nature of her kit, she still wasn't necessarily overpowered in normal games, although her annoyance factor did begin to increase. Where you did begin to see the change's impact however was in higher level play. Naturally, the effect was not immediate, as Ghost was still popular and teams needed time to decipher Sombra's new playstyle, but eventually they did just that. Some people recognized the sheer power in the hacker's kit, and she slowly began to be incorporated into otherwise Ghost heavy comps and metas. And surprisingly enough, she saw a good deal of success. For example, the LA Valiant used her to take out the otherwise unbeatable Vancouver Titans during Season 2 of the Overwatch League. Sombra was effectively an anti goat card within Goats, as her ability Lockout was incredibly effective at shutting down tanks and supports were often more reliant on their abilities than DPS. This became apparent as she began to infiltrate even more teams, such as the Shanghai Dragons who ended up winning the Stage 3 playoffs, in part thanks to their effective utilisation of Sombra. By the way, this video took a lot of time to make, and in the future I'll be covering other heroes such as Widow, Brick, or Orisa. So, if you want to see more, I'd love it if you could like and subscribe in order to not miss future releases. Although not necessarily overpowered, it was clear that this hero was becoming oppressive alongside the general GOATS meta. Even in lower ranks, despite having the lowest win rate in the game, people were still complaining. And so, Blizzard decided to take out two birds with one stone, by almost simultaneously nerfing Sombra's hack, as well as finally implementing Roblox to Overwatch. The community was understandably very divisive over Rolllock, but that isn't particularly relevant to our story. What is relevant is the drop off in Sombra's prevalence, particularly in the Overwatch League. Hack and EMP were most effective when disabling supports and especially tanks, so when there now were only two of each, she became less impactful. Combine that with an overall meta shift compounded by the release of Sigma and Sombra almost disappeared. It's incredibly difficult to find hero pick rate stats for non-OWL games this far back, but I assume that Sombra's stats were pretty rough. Despite players now being forced to use 2 DPS per team, Sombra was already one of the weakest heroes in the game, and then she got nerfed. We can only assume that she was used sparingly for a good while. Blizzard did see this however, and eventually gave in to reapplying some of her power by changing how her TP cooldown worked and reducing her weapon spread, 
thereby raising her overall damage output. By the time that season 3 of Owl rolled around, pro teams were unsure of whether or not Sombra was back in business. Based on the stats, it seems that there was quite a regional divide in hero usage. This is not all too uncommon in esports, as players within one region rarely play against those from the others until big events, and so separate understandings of the meta can develop. Although North America was reluctant to use Sombra, several teams in Asia saw her value, and she was often used as a flanking initiator DPS who could set up dives for her Winston Diva tank lineup. In particular, the Sombra Goat himself, Lif, led Shanghai Dragon to a main melee win through his masterful use of the hero. From here on, Sombra didn't receive a single bounce adjustment for the rest of the year, so Blizzard seemed relatively content with her current state. Granted, this was already at the point where Blizzard had largely abandoned Overwatch 1 for the development of its successor, but still. In regular play, Sombra stated a low pick rate and win rate, yet annoying as ever, and in the Overwatch League, she continued to be favoured by Asia, but mostly ignored in the West. That is, until the end of the 2020 season. With Dive already being strong, a D.Va buff in June resulted in Winston D.Va Dive becoming the meta just in time for the season playoffs, even in North America. And the absolute best DPS to combo this with at the time was Sombra. In fact, Sombra was so powerful she was even part of the anti-dive comp at times due to her ability to disable tanks and pick off supports. Meanwhile, her pick rates and win rates were still near the bottom of all heroes in the metal ranks. Just goes to show how big of a difference team coordination can make for certain heroes. Sadly, Sombra was forced out of the meta by a Roadhog buff in time for the Grand Finals, but her previous dominance proves just how deadly she can be in the right hands. That's one of the things which makes her so difficult to balance. Powerful when played perfectly, but weak for 98% of players. But I'll get onto that more later. For now, let's turn our attention to the beginning of OWL Season 4. From the start, Sombra was okay. Still appearing in a decent number of teams, but the competition was a lot higher and the go-to dive DPS was now traitor. On top of that, Ryan Zarya Brawl was played a decent amount, which Sombra doesn't really fit into. Quite soon after the season began, Sombra did receive a buff, however, and so she began to become more popular once again. This was actually the last balance change made to Sombra for the rest of Overwatch 1. Keep in mind that the sequel still wouldn't be releasing for over a year. Despite that, I still don't think Blizzard believed she was in a particularly healthy state. Rather, they realised that she required more drastic changes than simply some number adjustments, and so instead decided to develop her third rework which would later be released alongside Overwatch 2. The problem was however that Sombra was definitely not in a healthy state. Excluding OWL, she was still very weak, especially since people had now learned how to better counter her. But at the time, people's frustration with the character had built so high that now they were getting seriously annoyed and Sombra remained in this state for almost one and a half years. At least she had a place in Owl, staying as one of the best DPS for most of the season, but I'll gloss over that as not much changed for a while except for some standard meta shifts. That is, until Overwatch 2. No, not the actual game release, not quite yet, but rather Season 5 of the Overwatch League which played on an early build. Already, the majority of Sombra's rework was present. Now, this is where more of you are likely to actually recognise these changes. First off, her gun's damage was nerfed, but the spread was tightened, making it slightly more consistent, but overall reducing her damage output. This was counteracted, however, by the fact that she now dealt 40% more damage to hacked targets, thereby actually overall increasing her ability to get kills and pick off targets once hacked. Next, her actual hack ability received a reduced cooldown, but an ability lockout duration decreased from 5 all the way down to 1 second. On top of that, EMP was changed to instantly remove 40% health from any enemy hit, However, it was of course also affected by the decrease in ability lockouts. Finally, stealth was altered as to where it was easier to detect an invisible Sombra, but she can now use hack without fully exiting stealth. So, how did this rework fare at the highest level of competitive play? As it turns out, not very well. The whole point of Sombra in pro teams used to be to block enemy abilities, but now she couldn't do that nearly as effectively. As a result, she was practically never played even when Dive was meta, with teams instead opting for Tracer, Genji, or even Soldier 76. And of course, when Dive wasn't meta, she never even saw the light of day. That was until the final playoff qualifiers. Suddenly, Sombra could be found in almost 50% of all comps, being the third most played hero in general. But why? Well, the Countdown Cup actually took place across late September and early October. Do you know what else happened during that time period? Overwatch 2's official release, and tucked away behind all those other patch notes was a tiny little buff to Sombra, one which increased her ability lockout duration by less than a second. 
but oh boy did that extra time make a difference. Now to be fair I can't be 100% sure when Al switched to the Overwatch 2 patch so I can't guarantee that this was actually the case. However considering that there is literally no other explanation except for people just figuring out how to better use her new kit, I don't think this is too far of a stretch. Either way Sombra was now back to her dominant self. Once Grand Finals came around she was no longer favoured but it showed that even this new Sombra had competitive potential. But did this rework have a regular potential? Would the Sombra problem actually be fixed with a regular player base? Let's focus back on October 4th when Overwatch 2 was officially released in order to find out. As per usual big changes, people had mixed opinions on this new rework, some remains and other players alike. Some liked that she now had more DPS potential, whereas others complained about the direction Blizzard took regarding her hero identity. But how powerful was she? We saw how strong this iteration was in pro play, but in Sombra's case we know that doesn't usually translate to being good elsewhere. Yet this time, she was good. It took players a little while to realise, but once they did, Sombra began to dominate following her official release buff. I don't actually have any stats to show her win rate or anything from this time, but I can say that just a month later she received possibly her biggest nerf ever. Naturally, considering the nature of the hero, not everyone was dominant with Sombra, but in her right hands, or against those who didn't know how to counter her, she was not only annoying as usual, but this time even deadly. However, although her rubric suggested that Sombra's new power shifted even more towards assassinating isolated targets, her actual strength lay in just spam hacking the enemy tank. At the time, you could rehack a target, even if they were still hacked, so you could just bully the tank by effectively disabling their abilities almost 50% of the time due to a short cooldown, basically preventing them from even playing the game. As I said, she was quickly nerfed, and after that she became significantly less relevant, even making the F tier on Flats' tier list. That's where she remained for the rest of Season 2, later receiving a buff in Season 3 to make up for some of her lost damage. What I find interesting here is that Blizzard still couldn't figure out how to even remotely balance this hero, despite existing for 6 years at this point. The developer comment on this season 3 change even revealed that they were working on yet another rework to her abilities. The problem is that Sombra's fundamental hero identity is so incredibly flawed and unbalanced that no matter how they iterate her core functions, they'll still be bad for the game. Blizzard dug themselves into a pit the day that Sombra was released, and at this point they still couldn't find a way out. Lucky for the community, at least they were willing to try, as more changes were in the works. But as with all things, changes take time, and so it wouldn't actually be released for another 8 months. And 8 months is a long time. However, I'd argue that this at least wasn't the worst day that Sombra has ever been in, so there is that. Of course, she was still hated by large parts of the community, but when isn't she? In terms of how good she was, as per usual, she remained no more than a pest without a coordinated team. So despite their efforts, Blizzard's third rework didn't accomplish much except slightly shifting Sombra's role, but only slightly. Hopefully their fourth attempt would hit home. Before we look at that though, let's just have a quick look at how she fared during the final season of the Overwatch League. Did she follow her trend of actually being useful? Well, I don't actually know. For some reason, the official stats I'd been using previously in the video only reached up to the 2022 season, and I can't find relevant stats elsewhere. I can at least say that she was used a good amount during the mid-season madness final though, so let's just assume that her general usage was similar to usual, being good in die but less useful with other comps. After several months the wait was finally over and Sombra received yet another major rework, this time going as far as to get an entirely new ability. You most likely already know these changes so let's just do a very quick rundown. A gun does more damage, hack now takes you out of stealth, her passive allowing you to do increased damage to hack targets and see weak enemies through walls was removed, the new ability virus was added, stealth is now a passive which activates automatically after a few seconds, the MP was nerfed and translocates was chained to automatically teleport you when thrown after a short delay. All these changes culminate into what is effectively the Sombra we have today. So was this rework successful? Well, that depends on what you mean by successful. Did Blizzard overall improve Sombra? Yes, I believe so. Did they solve her core issues? Uh, only one. Did everyone like the change? Of course not, I don't know what you were expecting. As per usual, people were divided over what they thought about Sombra's fall free work. Some liked it, others believed it didn't actually fix anything, and even the Sombra players were unsure if this was a good direction. Looking back on it, I think both opinions are true to an extent. Sombra is now more engaging to play, less reliant on one ability, and easier to counter, especially with her no longer having that get out of jail free card. 
On the other hand, the things that used to make Sombra annoying are still annoying. Her entire kit is still centered around being invisible most of the game and then suddenly appearing, either to send someone back to spawn or to disable their ability to play the game. Overall, it is better than original Overwatch 2 Sombra, at least from a non Sombra player's perspective, but it still could have been a lot better. So, how has this newest version of Sombra developed in the game? In terms of further balance changes, not much has actually been done, excluding a few EMP buffs. I think Blizzard are actually relatively happy with where Sombra is currently at in the game, all things considered, and that she is possibly in her healthiest state ever. Granted, that doesn't mean a whole lot when referring to Sombra, considering her core issues which they are seemingly unwilling to fix, but still. In terms of a community, however, many people still hate her, and understandably so. I think a lot of the more recent dissatisfaction though comes from how the rework changed Sombra's effectiveness. Now, when it comes to pro play, I'm not sure what effect the rework has had, as the Overwatch League no longer exists and the new scene is a lot more difficult to track. However, in regards to regular games, especially in the meta ranks, I think that Sombra may actually have become more repressive. As long as you hit your virus, her burst DPS has increased significantly, making it easier to take out solo opponents who aren't aware of their surroundings. On top of that, lower rank players often don't know how to capitalize off a new translocator change and hunt Sombra down, resulting in her new weakness not actually being exploited. This has combined into additional frustration from a casual player base even though she is arguably worse now at higher ranks, which is surprising because Sombra has always been the type of hero to be awful in low ranks. So although her kit will remain more useful in coordinated play, Blizzard have at least managed to balance things out a little. All of that leads us up to where we are today. Sombra is in an okay spot, generally better than she has been in the past, but still far from great. The problem with Sombra and why she is so difficult to balance isn't one specific ability, but rather her core hero fantasy. The entire concept of someone who can go completely 100% invisible and then show up out of nowhere, combined with someone who can disable all of your abilities in an ability-based shooter, is just a heavily flawed concept which should never have been introduced in the first place. And no matter how hard the devs try, they will never be able to fix Sombra without going against their core values and changing the entire concept of the character. They can improve certain aspects, sure, and to give credit to them they did with the most recent rework, but even then she will never not be annoying unless nerfed out of existence. But that isn't really a solution either. Hopefully they can find some way to actually make her be healthier for the game, but without drastic, and I mean drastic changes, some will likely remain the annoying pest that she is today. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive history of Sombra. I'd love to hear what you think about her past and current states. Also, let me know what hero I should cover next. I'll see you next time.